Okay, so um, familiar situations, <coughs> excuse me. And I brought this up in um, uh, my group yesterday here because we were talking about pre contemplation in some of the areas in contemplation, how to flow through not relapsing and um, making a decision on what you're gonna do and how to plan it out, right? But the plan first starts with a commitment. And that means that you're committed to seeing the vision through whatever you're going to do. But there's a pre-contemplation. And I remember, Nia, you were saying the other day, you, you said something, uh, you text me or something, you said, I'm just contemplating some things. So the contemplation for you know, someone that's becoming sober or someone that has had malefic situations in their life means that they really see what they've walked through and that they want to disengage with it. The Bible talks about familiar spirits, but we took it a little further because I even brought it up in the discussion yesterday, but I didn't go deep. I, I just said the objective is this. So even if I look at Moses, and Moses was living in a high profile life when he was rejected out of it because of the actions of killing a, um, a guard. And that's in Exodus 1 and 2 and 3. Then we can see that if we looked at our lives, we could see where we were rejected even from friends and relationships, even when we were rejected from family members, right? We might be able to handle situations better. But the idea of everything that is malefic in our lives that rejects us, malefic meaning negative in our lives, and then it rejects us means that there is some type of divinity pushing us away from it where we couldn't push ourselves away from it. And so when we look at our life and we look at today, we're in heightened pivotal moments. Um, where things look familiar, but there is definitely changes. I think that I find that I have to document the change. I even have to, you know, document the fact that faith and action works together at this time. Um, I believe that in the beginning of the year, we were dealing with a lot of faith um, actions, which is spirit only. And then I saw uh, the contemplation time of issues that, you know, I had to deal with and others had to deal with. So there was some spiritual things coming down. And then we had to be synchronized with spirit to move forward. The rejection part um, of whatever we were going through, uh, wherever it was coming from, it didn't feel right, but it was right, according to God. It didn't feel right because there is a part of life that we uh, walk in and we sit in called mediocrity. Mediocrity means that I am actually sitting in a comfortable place and I am not moving forward because it's comfortable. And now I am being kicked into a new position, a new place, a new life, a new me. What I do with it today definitely makes a difference in the outcome for the next week to, to 90 days, to six months, to, you know, year and three years from now, that goal. And yes, a lot of us do not stay the course with writing things down. That's another topic. But the thing is to realize that we were familiar with uh, an area of life and we've all had to release um, those areas of life or they have transformed, right? They transformed, but we had to also learn that we could work with the transformation. Now, what that means is, is that I need quiet time with God. Um, I need to adapt a life that says when I am rejected, like someone that has a baby, the baby is rejected from the body. And that means that we all come here with probably some kind of issues of rejection because we're rejected from the body. Also abandonment. 
because we no longer have that same safety and security as we did when we were in our mother's womb. We're now in another position. Do you see what I'm saying? So here, there's nothing in life that we should be acquainted with as familiar or attached to. We should be in a position according to nature to be able to get up and move as God deems. Now, the connection becomes more vital with God and the divinity um, of God and the goddess as we take that quiet time. Some people, um, they make excuses why they cannot get up in the morning and do a devotion. I believe that once you start your day with God, your day will end with God. And then the practice will show us that crossing over a Red Sea is okay. Now I did tell them the Red Sea to me is a familiar, unfamiliar place. And if it parts, I don't know if I'm going to be mm, like Moses and go ahead and follow if God doesn't prophetically walk through me, take me through it. You understand? Because in my physical self, I may be afraid. And I have to address that because oftentimes when you come to a Red Sea situation, you don't cross because you can't see how to do it. The thing is noticing that you're in a familiar place and it's not really as comfortable because it's not what you want. It's not what you want. God had already told Moses how to move to get the people free. How are you going to get yourself free if you stay in the same place? right? Mentally, physically, and spiritually. How do you do that? And so, you know, to sum it all up is why, why have we been angry with people that pushed us out of something? They did their job. It wasn't a devil, really. It was an adversity or obstacle that we saw, but it was a good thing. Why are we upset that, you know, something didn't work out when the possibility is some greater coming because that other part was moved away. It's like put away in the trash now. That is over now. And what keeps us from moving forward or really accepting what is true is the, the fact that we've not did it before. We've not experienced this before. Or we've went through so many encounters of disappointments that we feel like that's just the only appointment that we're going to have now is being dissed. So the familiar is not what God wants. You see, when God created the earth, God even began to move through the people to create other things in the earth. So if I keep going around the mountain doing the same thing as in buying the same car, the same hoopty, thinking the same thoughts, um, feeling the same way, then my results will never, ever become new. I will never feel any different because I'm living in the feelings of something old anyway. I have the power to change my feelings. I have the power to change my outcome. I have the, ch the, the power to change my thoughts, but it's only inside of me that that will begin. There's no more external manifestations. Manifestations are coming through people through innate abilities because we are powerful individuals using the power of God and the goddess in a proper way. What is not familiar is using God or the goddess in the aspect that I'm saying. But if you practice every day in a silent mode, consciousness begins to rise. Now, this is not to say that people are not practicing. You got to amp it up because, listen, the world is amping it up. That's motivation. I got to get up and I got to do this before um, something else gets in the way. I have to detach from the world so that I can attach to the spirit world. Because if I don't, something unfamiliar will come. And I could be put in a mental throw of confusion because I don't know what's happening. Even when you don't know that something is happening, your consciousness being lifted up takes you into the place of saying it is well. 
it begins to work through you. Now, the other thing that happens is, is that you're connected to people that have consciousness. No, you cannot bleed them, but you can help ask for support. That means that they're going to pray for you. They can help you as you help them. This is the way that the world is creating an ambiance for us at this time. The groups, the ability to trust each other, which is unfamiliar because I trust you as long as you are doing what I want you to do. I trust you in my life as long as you are on the same page as me. But when I flip the page, how do you feel about me? See, I'm going to feel the same way about you. But if I see that you feel differently about me, I'm going to put you on another page as well. It's not about being um, negative or fast. But see, even in the midst of supporting people, we have to understand that we have to support ourselves. Now, you have to navigate through that familiar understanding because some people have been very comfortable with their own environment and themselves. So when they begin to push out and, you know, you're looking at, okay, how do I go ahead and tip my foot onto this sand where this seed and part it? And I'm not familiar with it. What if it comes back when I'm walking through it? Well, this is the part of trusting divinity, right? Trusting God. And if you can trust God, then you can trust yourself. But if you don't trust yourself to get up every morning and meet with God at a certain time or evening, afternoon, you do not and you will not, we will not be able to trust ourselves. The reason why is because the self connects with divinity within. The consciousness doesn't always tell us that, okay, it's time for you to get up and leave this situation, but we feel it. We have to be honest with ourselves, especially when you're connected to consciousness. You may fight to stay in familiar situations, but you can see that it's not productive because you begin to see that things around you are not producing. Things around are dead. That means that you got to walk into newness. Where's your newness? Unfamiliar and familiar. People do not want to, humans do not want to walk into unfamiliar situations. The reason why is because they don't know what's going to happen. But even in that darkness, it takes us back to new creation. What I don't know means that I humble myself to understand and learn. We were all breeded through darkness. There's a connection even with ignorance there. There's a connection even with what people call evil. But yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because death is in darkness, it's saying that I announce that what you have done and lived is no more. Let us now create new. It is partaking of the womb. Yes. So moving through unfamiliar situations, whether you like it or not, you're going to have them. It's time to adjust the mind to accept that unfamiliar is good because familiar is not going to continue to produce for you. Familiar is like drinking this bottle of water right here. The same bottle of water, I go and buy it because I believe that it's good for me. That's good. But what if they go out of business? <laughs> then I might have a problem because I have compulsive behavior concerning this type of water. That got, I got to get rid of that, that kind of thinking, you see. And you add it to the rest of your life. This is just one uh, type of thing. I, I I also say that you, we attach ourselves to things and houses, places, people. And if it seems like we've lost it, then we lose ourselves in that, right? And then we have to come back. Maybe some people just don't regain themselves, but we come back and we can say, okay, let me get grounded. And then someone like me will say, that's, it's just seeming. So maybe you're in a test because uh, you know, God wants you to see how you're going to respond to if I take that from you or if you're rejected from that. Or do you know the connection of rejection? Do you Will you continue to look at rejection as if it's a bad thing when you were rejected from the womb? Are you upset with your mother or your father because you can't get back into the womb? But then the, the other thing is, is that you are in the womb when you are 
in a position where you have seeming losses because now you're in the creation process again. So what will you create? What will you release? Will you release the un, I mean the familiar and move into your unfamiliar? Will you trust yourself to talk to yourself, spend time with yourself, walk with God, talk with God and build yourself up? Will you reach out to people that you know that you can trust in an unfamiliar time? Will you lean not to your own understanding? Will you lean on God? Or will you continue to lean on your own thoughts and the old way that you did things? This is also a big part of that Saturn and um, Aquarius or Uranus uh, square. Because Uranus is an energy that is much like new, 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 revolution, my freedom. But you can't fight someone because they did their job by telling you the time is over here. A new job is needed because you're needed in a new place and you just are afraid to accept that new job because you feel like your intellect does not uh, uh, get you into that new position when God is saying, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the light. You know, when all the odds are against you, you used to familiar battles. So you keep fighting the same battles, but you won't step over into that place, crossing over that Red Sea, which is blood red, to find that there's peace on the other side if you just embrace what you're being rejected from, familiar, into unfamiliar, new, abilities to learn. Do we not see that pride is a part of familiar? Pride is keeping me from embracing unfamiliar because I only want to do what I know how to do. So many of us are stuck because of that very feeling. It's safe, but it's not safe. It's not a safe place because if my journey called me to learn more, then I am actually killing myself by staying in a place that I am not supposed to be. Because I can't learn what I've already learned. I can't even be provoked to um, um, accept things that spirit is telling me concerning life that I need to because I'm living in an old a old paradigm, a old way, a old way of thinking. Amen. So any questions? Thank you, Lord. Talking to myself. Any I think questions? This is the on time. This is the on time message. Um, you know, like we talked the other day, uh, it's about seeing things in a different perspective to do something different. Because as you said, we can't keep doing things the same. It's not working anymore. It really isn't. Are you hearing me? Because I know I'm going in and out of the internet connection. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Okay. Yeah, so. so yeah, this was an on time. Okay, so we're moving into unfamiliar territory. And if you're doing that, you have to take um, God with you. God is however you see it, um, because there's no other that can see for you in that level. You see, even prophets can't see for you. They see um, in parables, they see uh, in time, no one can instruct us the uh, whole way, which means that we have to trust ourselves uh, with our spiritual um, man and woman. And that's why we, you know, are told by David to create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit, because the right spirit is not always there. You know, I might be thinking I'm right by righteousness, um, but it may not be the righteousness of Christ. You know, we live and move and have our being, but am I in Christ when I wake up in the morning with the mood swing? I got to swing that mood out 
and then let God in. Because I have to be aware, but I can't be aware if I don't study myself. And so on. This here, you know, it goes on. The unfamiliar is to be, um, you know, as I begin to look at what I'm hearing and, and seeing, and God is saying, remember um, how you get up in the morning and that the years have kept you in a place where you can ma maintain depression. Before I was familiar with that, that feeling and emotion, but it started getting to a place where I had to reach out. I don't know why I did but I believe it was because my family were, you know, uh, prayerful people. Um, I had prayer in my life, but it wasn't like um, it is today. So I began to look at it because something in me said, this is your healing. That's not always the case with everyone. Healing is available um, when you reach out. I believe everything is spiritual. That's just me. Um, it could be my journey. And it could be the testimony that I have to give others. But when you suffer from depression, you will believe that that's all that it is. That's all to life. It's just like that, that there is nothing else. And then when the epiphany happens, the light goes on. That part of you that I'm talking to you about that says, let's do something different. It rejects you out of it and it shows you something. Remember, you had at least three days of um, light, but you may have had those 29 days or 28 days, Kim. And then it says, oh, and you say, oh, I had three days. Maybe how do I get those days every day? You see, you study yourself. How do I get every day to be like that? And because that's, that's something, that spirit, whatever you call it inside of you showed you, then you start looking for answers. It's not, it's not drugs. It's not alcohol, because that's going to lead us down another path. You see, it's going to lead us backwards, because I am not dealing or addressing um, the, the issue, which is the depression. I want to go forward, so I've got to deal with that before I can go forward, because I need to get that under control. I can't control it. It's something that's inside of me. No one really knows about it. You see, you see what I'm saying? You go in different places, whatever the problem is that you've been f familiar with in, in living, you know, if it was getting up every day and you, you, you know, you, you toot and cope, your spiritual man being built up is going to help you to carry yourself out of that need to toot every day, to sniff it. Because the reason why we are comfortable or in mediocre situations is because we're enabling ourselves. We're numbing ourselves down. We don't want to take on the challenge of moving across that sea, even though it's been parted for us. Right. And, and that's it. It's pushing past fear. And, and we know that freedom is on the other side of it, but it's the paradigms that we've place ourselves in that make us think that what we're really experiencing is real and it's really not it's really coming outside of that paradigm to 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 know that there's more out here for you you just have to you just have to grab it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you just have to grab it and 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 just shift your perspective you know uh out of victimhood too oh man yeah that's a whole nother conversation but yeah yeah that's a trap right there it, it makes you feel comfortable being a victim but i mean you trapped you can't you can't even go across because you still talking to moses come out well well what if what if it close up it always happens to me that way and he's like <laughs> and what's crazy is that most of the time you don't even realize that you are in victim mode the you think it's other other people's victim no you really are yeah. you know yeah that's the unconscious part all right yeah. so thank you guys for joining we'll be back on sunday with this and um um i appreciate you and i pray you're uplifted i am going to put it on um youtube and instagram so people will see your beautiful faces at some point but the mess okay. needed 
moving out of unfamiliar, I mean, familiar territories into unfamiliar. Trust God. So, all right. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank Have you. Take care. Bye -bye. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.